Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is the reading for the June solstice of 2022, moving into cancer season. And the word I'm getting for this is formlessness, formlessness. And last night when I was kind of feeling into this, I wrote down a few sentences that I'm going to read to you. So Systems can be created to serve specific purposes and they can exist for exactly as long as they are useful. Then they need to collapse. Trying to maintain a system beyond its time creates a mechanical meltdown. Systems are there to serve you. You do not serve the system. So the way I'm feeling it is that sums up, <laughs> that encapsulates the energy of the solstice and it's going to be the entirety of cancer season and I really really enjoy cancer season it's still it's beautiful it is sensitive I do feel like how our human minds experience this year's cancer season can kind of go two different ways <laughs> so depending on how your mind is, is interpreting this, right? Because it's going to be still, it's going to be insu insular, insular or insular, insular. How do you say that? Insular or insular? <laughs> Very like a focused inward, focused on the home, focused on your inner world, focused on the self and of the family, right? Just pulling, pulling your energy back, pulling it in, pulling it in, pulling it in. And this is, of course, even if we want to look a month ahead and look onto Leo season, that's where all of this energy that we've pulled inwards, that's when in Leo season, we're going to let it shine out. But for right now, it's going to be this focusing inwards. So I do just want to mention that if you have been feeling like already kind of feeling like you're on this, in this phase of feeling disconnected, feeling isolated, feeling lonely, or feeling overwhelmed by the world that this cancer season could kind of bring all that to a head. It could kind of increase because that kind of energy is being emphasized throughout cancer season, right? So we want to try to steer into the highest frequencies of this energy because it's the same type of thing. I think I've, I think I've mentioned this before, right? We can either feel disconnected and lonely and isolated, or we can feel, <sighs> self-empowered, self-contained, peaceful, and serene, and tuning into the solitude, right? That can be the most beautiful, peaceful, blissful experience. So it's like there is this energy, this insular energy, and it can either be, you can either have the shadow manifestation of it, which will be um, disconnection, isolation, and loneliness, or you can have the light manifestation of it, which is solitude, peace, and the, the bliss of silence, right? So it can go either way. And I just, I, I already can feel the silence and the stillness. You can probably hear by how I'm talking. That's how I feel. So beautifully silent, so beautifully still. And um, Venus is very involved in this transition through the solstice because she has a very interesting se sequence of transits. I just wrote down, I didn't write the dates because they're all kind of happening one after each other. I'll put the dates down in the box if anybody really wants to know, but um, I feel like we to just tune into the rush of Venus's evolution here. She's going through this rush because she's making all of these aspects to all these other planets and it's just this rush of energy. So this is your feminine energy having this quick series of changes. This is and, you know, with Venus, it can also connect to love and romance and even your finances. Venus is also a money planet. So it's this rush of change and evolution, right? First, she's squaring Saturn. So that's Saturn coming in, teaching those lessons. And then she has a sextile to Neptune, which is that strange dreaminess, but also the transcendent urge, right? That this, this urge to escape, this urge to transcend, and that catapults her right into a trine with Pluto. So whatever this, your Venusian energies, like however this Venus is resonating for you this week, whatever she is trying to help you transcend, it, it's going to like transcend and, and transform like all at once, all at once. And then after this Pluto trine 
happens with Venus and then she's catapulted into Gemini and then her energy is entirely shifted, right? She's coming out of Taurus, which has been this kind of um, luxuriating, but also like a fixation on the physical and then shifting into Gemini with that changeable, mutable, conversational type of thing. And interesting how we're going to have this Venus and Gemini, which makes a lot of people, depending on um, depending on your chart, right? If you're Gemini, like for me, Gemini is in the eighth house. So other people tend to be really social in Gemini season. and But since for me, Gemini season makes the sun in my eighth house, that makes me really, um, really internal, right? It makes me tune out from the, from the human world. Um, but there could be like strange conflicts uh, with like your social life and your personal life, like your social life and you or your social life and your home life. There could be this weird and you could have, and I don't mean really any like specific manifestation of it. It could be like your feelings about it, right? Your feelings about this going like feeling pressured to socialize or feeling like you want to socialize, but then feeling like you don't have the energy for it. And you could have these weird, like convoluted kind of ambiguous or what's the word, like ambivalent feelings about de like dealing with humans, like <laughs> how to deal with all these humans. Um, you know, I just wanted to throw this out there as a passing thing because um, if you're, if you end up feeling those kind of like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to balance like myself and my social life, or I don't know how to balance my family life and my social life, stuff like that. Um, just do what you want at the end of the day, right? <laughs> just do what you want. And just remember that these, this is just part of the the background theme and you don't need to take it too seriously right you don't need to take it too seriously with cancer with cancer season there can be this tendency to take things like very 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 personally very 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 personally um i know a lot of people who practice like dry cancer season that were you know if normally they do drink alcohol but in cancer season they they won't drink any alcohol um because they find that they just their emotions just run run away with them through cancer season. <sighs> For me personally, I have learned from experience not to drink any alcohol around the cancer new moon, <laughs> which is that we're, we're a while away from that still. But um, I, man, it's like one or two drinks can I've I've not just myself, but it, many people that I have seen um, drinking around the cancer new moon, you can get hungover so easily. It's really funny. <laughs> anyway, so that's kind of just my quick general impressions of the cancer season in cancer season itself. But I want to be focusing more on back to what I had just said about the solstice itself, like formlessness and this new way of dealing with structures, right? Because whenever it's like cancer, if cancer season is the cookie, then Capricorn is the chocolate chips. Because <laughs> whenever we have um, any energy, right, it's opposite is also inside of it. And I really feel this with the cancer Capricorn axis. I feel it more so than others just because Actually, well, I mean, um, I'm a Capricorn and my sister's a Cancer, right? So I've kind of like lived my whole life on the Capricorn Cancer axis. And so it's like Cancer season is the cookie and Capricorn is the is the chocolate chips, right? It's it's inside. It's inside of Cancer season. And that's where this these bits about structure are coming through. So Cancer is is formlessness, is formlessness, is formlessness. Cancer is the rushing river. Cancer is our emotional bodies. Cancer is our mothers, right? And um, our, the inner mother, the, 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 the cosmic mother, all of these manifestations of the mother. But Cancer is also, um, I feel like often pigeonholed into this like mother, mother, mother energy. And there's more to it than that. There's also this like quick moving, rushing ahead, like a rushing river is the, simply the best way that I can describe it, right? Cancer tends to take action where Capricorn cannot, <laughs> um, where Capricorn would sit, sit around creating structures and pondering and working and planning. Cancer would just move. Cancer would just flow into it, right? Just flow into it from that intuitive space. So this message about, you know, creating structures and then immediately dissolving the structure, um, Uh, it, to me that it feels really, really, it's hard to articulate how, 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 how significant this feels to me because obviously 
humans tend to create these structures, right? And then we, we try to maintain these structures and humans don't like it when our structures start to collapse. And I mean, we, you could be looking out at the world and seeing structures out in the world, out in the, the out in your country, right? In the politics or the governing structure or the laws of your country, you can see structures starting to collapse. I'm not referring to anything specific, but you can definitely be seeing many manifestations of that. Um, you can be seeing this in your life where things that you used to be able to maintain or do just suddenly just aren't working anymore. The sooner you can realize that a structure needs to be collapsed the and just to allow it to collapse um, and to mourn its passing and grieve its passing if you feel that that's how you feel about it, but to let that just like move, move, move because and to know that to be able to tune into formlessness, right? To be able to sit on your floor, maybe shit, maybe you don't even have a floor, right? Imagine you were homeless and you would just sat down on the sidewalk and you just would sit in the formlessness of your existence because there is no structure around you, right? If you had no place to live, you would just sit in the formlessness of your own existence. But also you could know that you are safe because even if you were homeless sitting on the sidewalk, well, you're still alive, you're still in your body. And if you are someone who is able to watch this video, <laughs> then you probably live in a place where you can still get food and shelter before, you know, the homelessness starts to impact your health, right? <laughs> um, so it, it's that kind of analogy. It doesn't really matter what is collapsing around you because you can sit in the formlessness and know that in formlessness, there is a type of safety because if you can have this feeling of, I got nothing to lose, right? And that, that is empowering. When you realize it doesn't matter what is collapsing around you because everything, you don't, you don't necessarily have much to lose, right? And even the things that you have to lose, well, after grieving their passing, perhaps you find that you're okay, right? You're still okay. Sea goddess of sensuality, celebrate romance. So yeah, <laughs> this is, it's going to be a very feminine streak here, right? With, with Venus and with Cancer season. <sighs> to me, I almost see this as like romance with a capital R. If anyone, anyone is a fan of romantic poetry, like the, the old romantic poets, I, I don't mean like poetry specifically about love and romance, although it can be that, right? But romantic poetry with a capital R, the romantic period of English literature. Um, that was like, like one of my favorite favorite literary periods, right? I could just re read romantic poetry all day. <laughs> and it, it's, it's about tuning into the sublime, right? The sublime, that feeling of standing on the edge of a cliff, if I were to just briefly try to describe what the sublime is, right? Standing on the edge of a cliff, standing on top of a mountain, standing on the edge of the cliff, hundreds of meters dropping away below you, the wind is blowing, this, the sun is shining, you can feel the trees breathing behind you and it's so beautiful and the beauty is heightened. The beauty is heightened and sharpened and made more real and made so you can really experience it because you are on the edge of the precipice, because you are on the edge of the cliff. That makes your heart beat faster, that makes you feel alive and that makes you focus on every gust of wind and how you place your feet and how you stand, right? It makes you, it sharpens everything and it's that with that little bit of that edge of danger, right? That That's what makes the beauty real. So it makes the beauty real. That is the sublime, one one way of describing the sublime really quickly, right? So to, to me, it's kind of tuning into that to be able to live on the edge and feel free, to live on the edge and feel free, to imagine that you are a fish in a river, right? If you If you were a river fish, or if you were a river otter, <laughs> you you nothing would ever be the same. Your your home environment would, would be constantly rushing and rushing and rushing around you, right? You live in a rushing river. That's different than living in a pond or even living in the ocean. Um, it's like a like the rush. The world is constantly just rushing past you, but it's fine because you. That's where you live. <laughs> that's where you are. You you exist in that and you are designed to exist in that, right? You are a river fish or you are a river otter or pick a favorite river animal, right? That That is where you are designed to be and that is where you thrive and it's letting go of the desire to create anything that needs to be too long term because if you build in a river, I mean, unless you're a beaver, so the, the, there, there is one, there's, all, there's always the... the um, 
the counterpoint, right? There's always the opposite. There's always the one creature that will create the structure no matter what is happening, right? If you, because that's what beavers do. They go into the river, they create a dam, they flood the area, they create their lodge, and then they live there and they have terraformed the entire environment to be so, like so that they can live there as they want to live there. So unless you want to be a beaver and I mean you could you could be the beaver You could dam the river and you could flood the land and you could build your lodge and you could be the beaver But that's only like one animal that does that right all the other animals live in the river and just allow the river to flood and to flow and No structures you sure you can build something in a river right if you were to go down to the river you could like I remember one time at my family actually we were camping and we were trying to have a fire because you know you want to have a fire when you're camping but there was a fire ban on because of you know forest fires and um so we we went out into the river we were camping next to and we built up a fire pit in the middle of the river we spent a couple hours like hauling rocks like the river rocks and we built a fire pit and then we all just put our, our camping chairs down in the middle of the river and luckily it was hot so we were all sitting with our feet in the water and we had a fire in the middle of the river and when the ranger came back he just laughed at us and left. He said it was like he let us have the fire. So we <laughs> figured out a way to ha like to have our fire in a way that was safe and wouldn't risk burning down the, the forest and also kept the ranger off our backs, right? So, but, and then when we left, we disassembled the like artificial thing we had built in the river and put it back. So we built a structure and then disassembled it, right? We didn't try to like move into the river permanently and build a house there, <laughs> stuff like that. It's like allowing these structures just to be born as they are useful and then allowing them to disintegrate and flood away. Visionary Sea Queen number 22. Potent projections. <laughs> okay. I want some tarot cards on this. Um, no, I need a different deck. Okay, this is about being, this is about holding the vision. Oh, sorry, I don't know how long it's been blurry. This is about holding the vision, being the vision holder, right? The most important thing you can do. <laughs> Four of Cups, and look, this is not one of those sulky, sad Four of Cups. This this is a, a card of meditation, right? And this doesn't need to be meditating, meditating. This can be just sitting there and holding the vision, right? Sitting there and holding the vision, sitting there and tuning into the higher, higher frequencies of your experience, right? If you're feeling disconnected, well, just change the channel, right? Change the channel from disconnection and loneliness, change it to solitude and peace. Two sides of the same coin, right? So sitting sitting in your feelings, four of cups, especially this particular four of cups, this is very cancer season. Um, it's just sitting there in the watery landscape, feeling whatever it is that there is to feel. Seven of wands, rising above. The word here is valor. So rising above the, the noise that tries to pull you down. I've been noticing this a lot actually, where it, it, it's like, no matter how hard you try to, that's not the right way to say this. It. It's like, as you continually put your intention on rising up and as you continually put your attention on the evolution of your consciousness and as you continually put your awareness on your soul, right? Then the naysayers, start up again. And sometimes this comes from inside of you. It comes from your mind telling you you should be afraid or your mind telling you you're not good enough, your mind telling you all those stupid things. And sometimes it comes from literal, actual people who come up to you and start telling you things. They try to convince you. They're trying to keep you down. And if you notice, just notice, notice, notice all of these thoughts and all of these things that people say and all of these things you see on the internet and all these things you see out in the world, it's like they're all just trying to pull you down. They're all just trying to pull you down. And it's like, what? <laughs> Sometimes it's like, what? why? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't matter why because it, it, as long as you don't put any, don't feed your energy into those things that try to pull you down, right? Just rise above them. Just rise above them. Just go, okay my mind is making noise again, or those people don't agree with what I'm doing, and those people are saying shit about me, but it's like you just tune out of that, just mute them, hit the mute button on that, and continually rise above it. And that gets easier, right? That's a skill. It's like learning to climb stairs when you're a baby, right? At first, maybe that's difficult. 
I've never taught a toddler to walk, so I don't know, but I imagine, <laughs> you know, first you need to walk and then you learn to learn to climb the stairs, um, like on two feet instead of well, maybe first time you crawl up the stairs, right? And then you eventually, when you get tall enough, you walk up the stairs. It's like that, just keep climbing the stairs and it gets easier and easier and easier as you gain the skills. Eight of Cups retreat. Yeah, so this is what I'm saying about Cancer season being this insular type of thing, right? It's, and isn't that interesting how normally the Eight of Cups is this like walking away, it's this spiritual journey, but in this case, in this deck, it's the spiritual journey that pulls you back inwards, right? It's pulling within, pulling within, pulling within. You know, just, I'm just reflecting really quick on the various cancer seasons that I remember. And it comes to my attention that cancer season, it seems to be a month where we typically feel like things should be happening. Um, I mean, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and it's like summer's just kicked in, right? And you feel like you should be traveling and camping and going adventuring and doing whatever. And it, it's like, it's hard to like get those things to happen <laughs> during cancer season. For me, all of the fun summer stuff tends to happen in Leo season or even in Virgo season at the end of August, right? It's like, we almost gotta wait till the end of July before things really start moving. So, but, and so I've basically come to terms of like, don't fight, don't fight with that, right? Don't fight with that. If your summer fun doesn't happen until August, it's fine, right? That's fine. That, that, that's the energy will be more aligned with that. So don't get frustrated with things not panning out, um, with things not moving like you want to. And, and it's like, especially don't get frustrated with, it with yourself if you don't feel like doing the things that you think would be fun, right? Maybe you're like, I, I really feel like I should be going off and having this vacation or having this holiday or doing this trip um, or socializing, but you might not feel like you want to do it so you might have to really get honest with yourself and go, do I actually want to do this thing right now? Your mind might be saying, yeah, we should go do this. The time is now. We're going to run out of time. Like summer's burning, right? The summer's going to be over and we're they're going to have missed all the opportunities. Now we're just, just focus on like, do you actually want to do it, right? Do you really, really, really want to do it, right? Maybe it'll be a better time to do it later um, because cancer season is going to be this inner retreat, right? This inner retreat. It'll be time to shine in Leo season, right? There's going to be plenty of time for that. <laughs> sea goddess of courage, authentic communication. Oh yeah, because Venus is going through all of these, this rushing shift, right? Through all these weird um, aspects. And then she's going to be in Gemini. Um, and so this is going to be with the sun in Cancer and Venus in Gemini going to be a massive opportunity to get your communication cleaned up, right? And this is like specifically with family and you know friends that you would consider basically as close as family right and this is practicing this was another thing i was feeling into yesterday um i mean you've probably heard me say this before but this is like radical authenticity radical authenticity like the kind of authenticity that you maybe don't even feel that you're capable of and if you already a lot of you probably already are <laughs> very practiced at being authentic and very connected with your own inner light, right? And living your genuine, authentic lives. But for, for everybody, like myself included, right? There is another level of authenticity to be discovered deep within yourself. And and more to the point with this card, to be expressed, right? To be expressed, to be like fearlessly expressing your radical authenticity. And this also comes back to the seven of wands thing of like tuning out the, the voices that are telling you what to do. <laughs> because we, we had a kind of explosion of that with the Sagittarius full moon of, of people. Cause you know, Sagittarius, the Sagittarius full moon is like this, it's like teacher, it can be teacher energy, right? Teacher energy. So I really noticed the week of the Sagittarius full moon, everyone was kind of like, really like, really, really invested in trying to help others learn things, right? And that kind of came off sometimes with people giving um, advice, maybe that was unsolicited. And then, but, and since everyone was kind of feeling this way, everyone was like, don't, like, it was like this kind of clash of the Titans type of thing going on. It wasn't like, I didn't really experience it as like a big deal, but it was enough of like an energetic wave that I noticed it. Um, so, <sighs> Now that we're kind of moving on past that, right? That was just kind of a blip. It's like cleaning up and shifting out of all of the shoulds, right? All of the shoulds. 
everybody telling you, and this is including yourself telling you, like your own mind telling you, right? And your own social conditioning telling you what you should do. It's like, if you run your business that way, you could make more money. Um, or if you dressed that way, you'd get more dates or something like that. It's like people telling you, you should do this in order to get that result, right? You should do this in order to get that result. Whenever you hear that, whenever you find that pattern coming up, whether it's in your own mind or coming from others or coming from a video you clicked on, right? People are going to say, you should do this in order to get that result. That's what you want to be actually, I mean, you don't necessarily need to ignore it all because sometimes these things are relevant for you to hear and you can maybe learn something from it. So you don't need to whole hog ignore everything, but definitely use your discernment about like how much of that you're taking in and never, never, never feel the should, right? Never feel the should. Just take the message. Just take the idea. Go, okay, that might be a useful idea for me at some point. I'm going to file that away. And when the moment is right for me, I might explore that. But just don't like anything that is a should. No, this is like where should goes to die. Okay, <laughs> no more shoulds, no more shoulds. And why is this so important? This is because it's this authentic communication, right? This authentic communication. And the phrase I feel with this is the only thing anyone really has to offer is their authenticity. That's, that's it. That is it. All you have to offer is your authenticity, right? And if you're trying to offer things that are not your 100% complete authentic thing, then you're just like creating these weird energetic loops and, and it just get, it's just, it's creating clouds. It's creating clouds around yourself. And that that's a, you know, a way of self-protection, right? That's self-protection. You're, you're essentially when, when you go, okay, I'm going to like, imagine you're a musician to just use an example. Imagine you're a musician and you write music and you've been trying there's like maybe music that you write and you never show anyone because you feel like it would be too weird and no one would get it and no one would like it and it'll never get you famous, right? So you listen to the radio and then you go, okay, I'm going to write music that's kind of like that because then I could get more gigs and then maybe I can get a record deal or, you know, then maybe I can get big on SoundCloud or something like that. And so you're trying to, you go, okay, I should be more like that um, because that way I will be more successful. That's the kind of thing here that it, it's like, that's the kind of thing that is going to stop working. I know because sometimes you can have a certain amount of success with that kind of strategy because, I mean, if you are if you're, want to align to more success, like more external world success, you can absolutely take those types of advices and you could take the, do those steps and you can get more success in the world. But I think that that, that, the, that kind of strategy is going to work less and less and less, especially if you know, your soul wants you to be tuning into your own authenticity, you're going to start having roadblocks get thrown up. So that means like this, this, uh, this musician could be sitting there going like, I don't understand. I don't understand why I'm not getting anywhere. I don't understand why I'm not getting famous. I don't understand why no one likes my music. I'm playing the same kind of music that everybody listens to on the radio or something like that, right? It's like, I'm doing everything right. I don't understand why it's not working. Well, it's not working because it's not authentic. It's not working because it's not authentic, right? So maybe that same musician could just release the music that they make only for their own ears, right? No matter how weird it is, no matter how much they think no one will like it, no matter how much they think no one will understand it. The important thing is like, that's like a, a, a representation of their soul. And like, that's all you have to share is your own authenticity. And it's like, for for this example, if this musician is meant to like align with a larger audience, right? It's going to happen through their own authentic music of their soul or it's not going to happen at all, right? So it's like you can try to craft these false structures that you think might work and then you can still fail at it. <laughs> and so then it's like you try to be something that you're not and it didn't work. So you kind of like failed and you failed. It like sucked on two accounts, right? First you were being something that wasn't authentically you and then it didn't even work anyway. So that just means the whole experience was just like a lose-lose situation. But here's the thing. So now you're thinking, well, I don't know if being authentic is going to get me anywhere. I don't think, I don't know if it's going to get me famous or make me money or make me friends or whatever, but it's like, hey, <laughs> that's fine because you don't know if being fake is going to get you money or success or friends either. So if you are authentic, that's at least one win, right? The, that's the first win. If you're being authentic, well, then you win 
because you're being yourself and being yourself is the only thing you have and being yourself is the only thing that that you have to offer anyone and being yourself is like the only thing that is actually satisfying right and then from there sure if, if you go off and you, you don't become famous well that's so you win you won one and you lost one right you won one and you lost one at least you won one right it's like you you, you always have that you always have that you always have, you can always say well at least i was myself at least i was me at least i was sharing my authenticity so yeah, and authenticity is the only thing that is sustainable anyway, right? Authenticity is the only thing that is sustainable. If you are, it doesn't matter if you're like at a job, in a relationship, running some kind of business, doing some kind of creative project. If, if it's not rooted in your authenticity, if you're trying to like fake it to make it, it, it you're, you're going to not make it because you're not going to be able to keep it up, right? That's how people get burnt out. That's how people lose interest in what they're doing. That's how people realize that like they got what they wanted and then they don't even want it, right? So, the other thing, I'm trying to loop this back to the thing about, like, structures being born and then, like, born for a specific purpose and then being used and then being immediately collapsed, right? Um, those structures can be born of your own authenticity, right? Your own authenticity, Because it feels to me like if you create a structure that comes from some kind of should, right? If you create a structure, if you go, I should make more money. <laughs> I should do this. I should change the way I run my business because that will make me more money. I mean, changing how you run your business in order to make more money, that can be an amazing, fantastic thing. Making money from your business is fantastic, but it has to be coming from the from the the authentic impulse, right? If you go, I'm going to compromise my own authenticity in order to run my business in a way that makes me more money. It's just then that, then you've created this structure that just like is going to collapse and cannibalize itself, and it's not going to be good. So everything has to come back. Everything, everything, everything has to come back to the authenticity of your own self-expression and it's like I'm like rambling and ranting and like really harping on this because the sooner we just click into that the better cancer season is going to be right the better cancer season is going to be I want a few more tarot cards just to see if there's like something else Four swords, yeah, so <laughs> confirming that this is going to be this insular, inner, hermit, serene, peaceful, healing month, right? Moon child. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cancer is, the, is ruled by the moon, right? I don't even know what else to say about this. This this is really that, right? This is tuning into your inner light. This is tuning into your inner authenticity. This is following your your dreamscape is what I'm hearing. Following your dreamscape, holding the vision, holding the vision, right? I started talking about that and I got sidetracked. So holding the vision, holding the vision. When you hold the vision, that's holding space. In order for change to happen, you first need to believe that change can happen. And then once you believe change can happen, you need to believe that change in the direction that you want, like a change in the direction of more peace and joy and love, that that can happen. And so the more you just hold that vision, the more you hold the vision of your life feeling peaceful, the more you hold the vision of your life being full of love, the more you hold your, the vision of your life being filled with joy, you're literally opening that space up for yourself. And so for some of you, this could be more of holding the vision for your own life, holding the vision for your own self, where you're trying to get yourself up into a better feeling life, holding the vision for yourself, knowing that it doesn't matter how you feel right now. It doesn't matter where you're at right now. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life right now. Hold the vision, open up your mind, open up your vision, open up your perception of your own future, open up and remember that 
your life will continue to change. Change is inevitable. It's a strange thing. The human mind often feels like change is impossible, but change is the only thing that is like one of the only things that is constant in this universe. It's a constant change. So change is inevitable, right? So if you're not feeling fantastic, just remember change is inevitable. Change is inevitable. So open up to the first to the vision that change is inevitable. And then hold the vision for how you want your future to open up to. And for others, this is going to be like being a vision keeper for the entire collective, right? But specifically for this month, this isn't so much, how do, how do, I, how do I put this? The video I post after this one is gonna go into this in more detail. I actually already recorded it, but I haven't posted it yet. <laughs> so there's gonna be a video kind of where I talk about transcending uh, like service oriented archetypes. And basically to sum up that video, it's like, depending on where you're at, depending on where your consciousness is at, on one level, thinking about how can I be of service, that that raises your frequency, that raises your consciousness, right? But then as you continue to grow and evolve, at some point that, I, that idea, that thought of how can I be of service, that actually starts to lower your consciousness. That starts to lower your vibration. And it's not because you want to stop inspiring, uplifting, or like ser like helping the evolution of consciousness. It's like that that thought of going, how can I be of service to others? That lower, it can lower your frequency because it's suddenly inverting the self, right? It's taking your awareness away from your own inner light and it's putting it on all these other people and it's making, it can make you think like, what do they need? And then how can I serve them? And that can, can depending on where your consciousness is, is at, right? As you can see, that can either be ra like raising up your consciousness if you're in this place of like, I like, feeling like you've never made, an, made a contribution or feeling like life is purposeless, right? Going, how can I be of service? If you're in, if you're in that space of my life, it doesn't have any purpose, right? If you, if you do, feel like you don't have any purpose and you go, how can I be of service? That levels you up into this place of spiritual service and then that raised your frequency. But if you're up here in this place of just holding the light, being a light keeper and just with every breath already naturally without thinking about it serving the evolution of consciousness is sitting there and going how can i be of service that suddenly you're back down here that lowered your frequency because now you're like back in the mud trying to like sort everybody out and trying to help everybody right so there's gonna be a video on that um now i got derailed again coming back to holding the vision right so when i'm talking about holding the vision holding the vision I don't really mean trying to figure out the details about what new earth will look like or what the Aquarian age will look like or however you perceive the shift in consciousness, right? It's not so much about figuring about the details and what needs to happen and trying to solve the problems on the planet. It's not, it's not, that's not really what I mean specifically for this reading, for this month, for cancer season, for this solstice. It's more of just tuning into like the abstract vibrations, the abstract feelings of what does it feel like to be in a higher vibrational state? Like as I was falling asleep last night, I just suddenly saw this vision of this like magnificent golden white, like feathered dragon type of being. It was, I couldn't really see like what it looked like because it was just like molten light. It was just blazing, blazing light, golden white light, just blazing kind of in the shape of a of a dragon or a bird, right? Um, flying, stretching its wings and flying. And I, I just kind of, and I felt its energy and I felt two things in it. First of all, just the expansiveness of its light and the frequency of its consciousness. And then I also felt this like wave. I, I very specifically remember feeling like a wave of forgiveness was washing over the planet. And I was like, that's super cool and very interesting. <laughs> um, and I don't, not sure how the two are connected, but anyway, so, you know, and so I just, I just lay in bed, like tuning into this being with this golden, molten golden, like plasma golden light, just shining, shining, shining. And I just tuned into that feeling, right? Not having any thoughts about it, not trying to figure anything out, just tuning into that vision of how that feels to be that kind of expansive consciousness and just tuning into that and just feeling it, right? In a very non-cognitive way. And this is looping all the way back to the first thing I said is like formlessness, right? Formlessness, formlessness. So it's like hold the vision in a formless kind of way, in a, in a formless way. So in like a non-verbal way, in a non-linear way for sure, in a non-structured way that doesn't, you can create structures and collapse them 
one that is useful to you, but the big picture is formlessness. The big picture is formlessness and just hold the formless picture of frequencies that inspire you to rise, right? Frequencies that inspire you to rise, to hold the vision, to be the vision holder for yourself, for yourself, really. Because as you ignite your own light, <laughs> now the light naturally shines out from you. So again, this is very interesting, right? You can see how cancer season, we can think of this as like the lead up to Leo season because we're going to spend a month pulling the light, pulling the light, cultivating the light within, figuring out how do we want to feel? How do we want to hold the vision, right? What, what frequencies, what kind of expansiveness, informlessness, <laughs> You can tell now, now like my, my words are starting to like not make any sense, but that that's this month is going to kind of be like that, right? You, you're going to probably find yourself talking and realize like what you're saying just doesn't make any fucking sense. And that's fine because formlessness is the theme of the month. <laughs> formlessness is the theme of the month and you're just going to be feeling into it, right? Just sit on your floor and just feel, feel, feel for these beautiful transcendent frequencies. And then by the time Leo season comes around, you're going to be shining that out. So this is the month to cultivate that within you. And then next month we shine, shine, shine. So I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.